It's about six in the morning. Already a false dawn breaks over the great city as it stirs into activity. Already groups of early workers start to crowd the subways. Already news trucks with the early morning city editions speed through the city. Right now, as a news truck speeds up to the intersection, drops off a bundle of newspapers in front of the newsstand. Hey, why don't you look where you're going? Narrowly missing Kitty DiCarlo, who, after crossing the street, stops in front of a darkened cocktail bar. Doesn't look to me like anybody's in there. Fine. Oh. Someone can't even get a break before she goes to sleep. Can I help you, lady? Oh. <laughs> I know this. Can I help you? I need a drink, officer, but it looks like nobody in this town except you ever goes to work. Well, bars aren't allowed to open before eight, lady. Huh? Close it for, open it eight. Well, you don't know a place I can get a drink before eight. Sorry, but I don't, lady. Now listen, why don't you go to that restaurant across the street? Get yourself a glass of hot milk. Yeah. Or some coffee. I need a drink. Well, yeah, then you'd better buy yourself a morning newspaper, lady. Huh? And sit down somewhere and read it. Bars don't open until 8 o'clock, which means you've got almost two hours to wait. Kitty DiCarlo doesn't bother about a morning paper. She just looks at the officer, then walks slowly and unhappily down the street in the direction of her hotel. Meanwhile, some miles away, at the district attorney's home... Ah, oh, Mr. Mason, the street. Come in. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Attorney, and thank you for seeing us at this time of the morning. Well, not much chance of my getting back to sleep after Craig brought me your client and the blank woman. I'm, uh, afraid there's going to be a nasty case, Mason. Oh? But then, of course, you don't know what we know, and... <laughs> I, for one, certainly don't intend to tell you. May I say something, Mr. District Attorney? Yes, Miss Street. Well, we have every reason to believe that no kind of innocence... Oh, I'm sure. Well, it's out of my hands now. Is it? Or if you'd like to talk to the assistant in charge... Yes, I'd like that. Oh, he's back in my library. Uh, first, though, uh, nothing has been released to the press? We have enough reporters on our neck all the time, Mr. Mason. We don't go around waking them up. Why? Well, as you know, I have just returned the child in question to Mr. Grant. Yes? Uh, Mr. Grant doesn't know yet that Dory is not his own. I want the chance to tell him. Well, we'll schedule a press conference for 11. Nothing will get out about the parentage of the child before then. Well, thank you very much, Mr. D.A. I can imagine what a shock it would be. There here. won't be any leaks from here. No, I wonder what happened to App. Who? Uh, App, Frederick App. App? Isn't he the one who... Look, my boy, yes, yes. He's the one who handled the Richmond jewelry robbery thing. Yes, I... Oh, here he comes. Yes, he was back having coffee. App. Uh, yes, sir. Come over here. I want you to meet May Grant's lawyer, Perry Mason, and uh, Mr. Mason's secretary, Miss Street. Oh, how do you do? How do you do, Mr. App? Mr. App? I'm sorry we had to meet under such conditions, Mr. Mason. But so am I. Well, I'll leave you all. Thank you again, Mr. District Defendant. Uh, watch him, App. He'll steal your eyes, <laughs> uh, Goodbye, Miss Street. Goodbye, sir. Now, if you get to the point, Mr. Rapp, we we'll believe Mrs. Grant innocent. Yes. And since we may only be able to hold her on an open charge, you'll come to warn me that unless she's released or booked on a specific charge, you'll pry her out of jail with the weight of habeas corpus. I uh, didn't come here to warn or to threaten the right to habeas corpus. The new poem through which the criminal seeks to obey the majesty of the law. What was that? Uh, that was Mr. Rapp's way of putting it, Della. I would say it keeps the state from arresting a citizen, throwing him in jail, and holding him in bus. Would you say that, Mr. Mason? Well, I suppose you would. Oh, but please understand me. Even though I'm hampered by these rules, I'm not criticizing the machinery of justice. No? No, Miss Street. Because even though criminals and their lawyers twist and dodge behind the law's technicalities, an able prosecutor can flip them up. Uh, shall we talk legal philosophy at another time? Indeed we will, Mr. Mason. Oh, because I believe you and I represent two opposing views of the law. The righteous moral view and the sentimental merciful view. In other words, you are a watchdog for the law. Yes. Well, personally, I would rather be a watchdog guarding innocent persons from a mistake. The law doesn't make mistakes, Mr. Mason. Just as you made no mistake and saved yourself trouble by coming to me for it. You couldn't get a rid of habeas corpus when they grant. He's charged with murder in the first degree. We repeat, murder in the first degree. 
for which no veil is given. In other words, you believe Kitty DiCarlo's fantastic tale. Uh, Mrs. Blank, or as you choose to call her, Kitty DiCarlo, is a poor, sinned against woman. Oh, right. You uh, sound sure of yourself, Mr. Rapp. I have proof, Mr. Mason. Good and sufficient proof. Proof which is so convincing to me that I intend to lay it before the grand jury as soon as it can be arranged. Rapp, I have... All right, I can't stop you. However, let me ask you this. Go easy on the publicity. May Grant is not the only one who will be hurt. As the child... Mr. Morrison, well, let's understand this from the start. I don't intend to go easy on anything. It's my duty to see virtue triumph. Evil punished. I shall do everything in my power to bring this about. And so you'll know just where I stand. I wish there were a punishment more devastating than electrocution. So I could ask it for your client. And I'll tell you why. Because May Grant's crime is more terrible than murder. She not only took a life, she tried to steal a life. She tried to steal Captain DiCarlo's child. She profaned the sacredness of motherhood. Now the machinery of justice is turning. I shall say not that it is halted, but that it moves as quickly as possible against Mrs. Grant. And gets you as much publicity as quickly as possible? I can't even answer that. Unless you like to think of this as an answer. I believe in right. I believe in right triumphant. I believe evil is always punished. I shall see to it that evil, in the form of May Grant, is punished. And Mr. Mason, now I warn you, if you stand on the side of evil, you will be smashed. Not because I by myself am powerful, but because I, with right on my side, form an irresistible combination. I hope it works, Mr. Rapp. Justice always works, Mr. Mason. And since I represent justice, that's... Do I make myself clear? Perfectly. Now, before I thank you for this interview, the uh, DA said no press releases would be made before 11 o'clock. The district attorney is a man of his word. Is what he said binding on you? Uh, yes. And that's all I wanted to know. All right, Della, that gives us plenty of time to see May Grant before we go explain things to Let's go. Mr. Grant. A few moments later, in the lobby of Kitty DiCarlo's hotel... waiting for 8 o'clock so I can get a drink. Anna, I... I Are you going from a pay station? Yeah, Anna, I need a drink. I, what I, happened I... when you talked to the district attorney? Well, you ought to see my hands are shaking like a leaf. But they stopped shaking? If I played you the record of you confessing to the murder of Marcel? Oh, don't, please, please. Well, then what happened? You, I, I talked to a guy named Frederick Afton. Impress him? My witness did. I did just what you told him to do, Anna. And? Well, it hit the guy up just right. He's a crusader, believes in motherhood and that kind of stuff. He can maybe take Perry Mason, Anna. With our help, he will. Now, you go on up to your room, Kitty. Stay there until you get a message about a dress. Then go downstairs to a pay phone booth and phone me. But, Anna, I've got to have a drink. have them send up a drink at 8 o'clock. Now, go to your room while I phone Bill Grant. What? I'm going to phone Mrs. Grant's husband. Anna's got something she wants to say to him. is hidden the Frederick App. Well, after talking to Frederick App, Perry Mason knows he's in a fight. But Perry doesn't know, can't know, about Anna B. Hurley, his hidden opponent. And as for what Anna plans to do, why, she wants to talk to Bill Grant and, well, be sure to join us on Monday 